Hello, everybody. Welcome to Art Time Live. My name is Bridget, and I'm at Waterfall Arts in Belfast, Maine. Sometimes my sound doesn't work for the first few minutes. So if you are out there, just give me a comment. Let me know that you're uh, out watching and you can hear me OK. And of course, as usual, introduce yourself. Let me know who you are. If you're out there on YouTube, if you are logged on, you'll be able to talk to me and our special guest today. So see if you can't do that. Today we do have a special guest named Katie Bitely. We'll be bringing her on in a little while, but uh, first we're going to play a quick round of what is it so that folks who are watching this anytime can just put a comment with whatever their answer is. And we will also get started on our activity just a little bit before we bring Katie on so that folks have a chance to get their hands busy while they're listening to us chit chat. All right. So uh, before we get going on what is it, let's just make sure that you have everything that you need for today's activity. Very, very simple here. We want to do, uh, what is it, four things that I have share my screen with you too here. Um, some tape. <laughs> Scissors, pencil if you want. Actually, you don't really need a pencil. Paper, just a bunch of it. It's just copier paper, nothing special. Um, yeah, that's it. Could it be simpler for today? I do not think so. Of course, here is my screen. If it's of interest to you, <laughs> to get that turned. Oh man. Here we go. All right. So one quick round of what is it is going to look like this. I'm going to show you an item from my desk. And you are just going to put in the comments what you think it is, could be, might be. And this is my object for today. I'm actually going to put it here so you can see it a little bit more easily. Mm-hmm. What, pray tell, is this? Now, I think this is a good one because a lot of you might not have any idea what this actually for real is. So maybe that makes it easier for you to be very creative. What could this be? I look forward to your answers as strange and believable at the same time as you can possibly muster. Appreciate it. I'm gonna Put that down for now. So today our project is to make a window sized curtain. When I say a paper curtain, I don't mean a little baby curtain for your dollhouse. I mean, somewhere in your house, there's a window that needs something beautiful on it. You still wanna be able to see outside. You still want that sunlight. That is such a rare commodity right now in our lives, but it needs to be beautiful. You have everything that you need to make that paper and scissors mostly. Did I remember to bring my paper curtain that I made? No, it is on my kitchen window. That is fine. It's gonna come together rather, rather quickly. Some of you are thinking, oh yeah, paper snowflakes, what up? I'll just make some snowflakes and tape them. Yes, that does work. It just might be a little bit wonky and we're going for something really, really nice that your parents are actually gonna let you keep up there. Perhaps they're gonna have you create a whole bunch for every window in the house because they're gonna be so impressed. The other thing that I really love about this kind of curtain is that when the light comes through it, because you're basically backlighting a paper cut, the light and shadows that it's gonna make on the wall or on the floor behind it are super duper beautiful, super cool. Um, I actually bought something like this that is made out of Tyvek, which is the stuff that you wrap a house in to keep it warm underneath the shingles and stuff. So it was heat proof and fireproof. So a, a famous paper cutter did an amazing paper cut with all these deer and birds and all the stuff in it. And then it was cut into Tyvek and you could drape it right over um, light bulbs. So pretty. So this is a similar, only flammable. So please do keep that in mind. I see that I have Ms. Gabby Gardner out there. Glad that you're here with us. I don't know if you missed the what is it question item here is your item ah what is it what could it be what might it be 
Katie Bightley, I know you're there and you are a what is it veteran. So you may put in an answer there in the comment as well, just so I can make sure that you can comment with me. Also, oh, there's my water. Just tip my water right off my desk. Anyway, we're gonna be folding and cutting, but there are a couple of little tips and tricks that are gonna make this go a lot better. Mostly the fact that if you snip the edge of each paper sheet, this thing is not going to be able, you're gonna need a lot of tape, let me put it that way. It's possible, but you're gonna need a lot of tape and a lot of time. Um, so I'm gonna show you the tricks that will help you avoid snipping so that you end up with like 12 little pieces of paper and you'll need 12 rolls of tape for that, okay? Grab your paper, get in front of you. And while you do so, I'm gonna check in with Gabby's guess here, which is that it is our item of the day is a multi-use sponge, a little tiny baby sponge. And it's rainbow-tastic too, I would. I'd buy that for a dollar, that fancy little sponge. Tempted to tell you what it really is, but this could actually be a whole, we could do a project one week on Art Time Live, how to make these. You probably guessed it, but that's for a string so you can wear it, but we'll come back to it. Peeps, our first piece of uh, paper. Later on, we're gonna double these up so that we can be cranking out these pieces of our curtain. But for now, let's do one at a time. Let's do this together. You're just gonna fold your paper into quarters. Quarters are four parts. So fold it in half and fold it in half. It don't matter which way you fold it in half and fold it in half, okay? As long as you're dividing your paper into fours. What I want you to notice, what I want you to remember today is that these are the edges out here, the open part. These parts need to stay intact. When you are doing paper cutting, the hard part isn't actually cutting the paper. As a paper cutter, the really hard uh, job for me is to work out a design so that when I cut out all the bits, it still is strong enough to hang together. It's easy to take an X-Acto knife once you've practiced at it and you know cut out a design that you drew, but the real trick is engineering a drawing that always has little parts that are keeping the whole thing together. The edge of the paper, the open edge, is your part that's gonna keep this thing hanging as a curtain. So if you have a pencil and you wanna make a little <laughs> warning to yourself, I'm just gonna draw a little neener, neener, neener. Neener, 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 that closer. To remind me not to cut over here. No, 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 I wanna leave this. It's gonna be like a paper frame, okay? Um, let's cut a little something, something. Now let's review basic snowflake kirigami skills. If you want to get a symmetrical shape, how do you do it? You fold it and cut on the fold. Anything you want right here. I'm gonna keep it simple. Oop, where am I? I'm going to, I'm just gonna do one of these guys. Oop. If just for this one you wanna copy me, that's fine. Cause you're gonna be freestyling when you make your other ones, okay? So boop, right there. I'm not cutting off my magical edge. The edge is my best friend. I don't wanna cut it with my scissors. All right. If you're curious, let's open mine. You don't have to open yours, let's open mine. Uh, let's hang that in the window. No, let's not, that's terrible. Keep going. All right, don't cut that. Let's do a little something something over here, right? This sad little side needs a little something. I'm keeping it super simple right now, just so we can see where we do and don't wanna cut. We do wanna cut on the folds. We don't wanna cut on the edge. How, pray tell, do you cut something out in the middle of your paper? 
Do I stab it? Do I hold it like this and stab it with my sharp scissors? No. How do we do it, folks? Somebody give me a comment. I know I have Mavis out there. I'm turning this like that. There we go. Um, I know that I have Ava out there. How do I cut a hole right up in here without damaging myself or my furniture? Anytime you want a hole, you got to fold and cut on the fold. So you could do that anywhere. You don't always have to do that on the edge. Make your own fold. So I'm going to fold this willy-nilly. And as long as I'm not cutting that or that, it's all good. So I'm just going to... Did you miss what I did there? I just folded right over where I want to cut out some stuffs. And I'm just going to do the same shape that I've been doing. Yeah. Okay. Let's open it. Mavis, you got it. Fold it. There we go. Now this is pretty nice. I like this. Let me show you. It's hanging. This is going to let a pretty nice amount of light in. It's got things just looking at mine. Uh oh, my screen's gone dark. There we go. How do I get something over here now? It's the same thing as before. I want to have something cool here. I don't want to cut this or this. Same story. Instead of trying to stab through the paper, I'm just going to make a little fold and I'm going to kind of cut a little something. Some. I'm just sticking to the same shape. Keep it simple. Oh yeah, that's gonna be cool. I might as well do it here too, right? So if you're just joining us today, our guest artist is Katie Bitely. And she's ready to chit chat with us just as soon as we're on a roll here. I'm gonna open it up. See what I got. Yes. Oops. I like it. Now, you have a couple choices for your curtain. You could fold your paper again and do the same design. You could take, and I'm going to do this because this paper is not very thick. You could do two pieces of paper at a time so that you'll have two of the same design going down. That's what I did for my bigger one. I just did, I repeated the same one several times. So I'm going to have two sheets of paper. You remember how we're folding this? In quarters. Fold it in half, whatever way, I don't care. And fold it in half again. Quarters. And I wonder if you remember what part we do and do not want to cut. Here's my fold. I do want to cut on the folds. Here's my open edge. I need to keep the open edge intact so that when I'm taping all of my papers together, it can be nice and strong. So again, if you want to give yourself a little warning, a little reminder, find the open edge. No, I'm gonna write, do not cut. Okay. Let's try a different kind of situation. I'm gonna do, how about triangles on this one? That's easy. Here's another tip. The bigger shape that you cut here, the more empty space is going to, uh, the more empty space there will be on your piece of your curtain which is cool, it lets in lots of light, but it's gonna make the whole thing weaker. So don't go jumbo cuts here. Just, as I said before, a little something, something. You can do a bunch of little ones. I'm not even gonna draw it. I'm just gonna freestyle people. Freestyle. And triangles are fun and easy, so I'm going to do more triangles. Boop. 
And just a reminder here, folks, to say hello if you're out there. All right, now I want something in here. What do I do? Remind me. Do I stab it <laughs> with my scissors? No, fold it. Fold it and cut it. I bet you know what shape I'm gonna do. Triangle, symmetrically, is going to be a diamond or a square, am I right? Yes. All right, I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna open that up. Mm -hmm. Yes, look, I have two of them. I don't love this here, too much paper. Mm, I think I'm okay with this, but this, here's our challenge right now. Let's see if we can figure out how we can, well, first let's find it. Where is that area here that I was bored with? What was here? Do you think I can fit something in there? I do. Watch me, I'm gonna draw it so you know what I'm talking about. How about, how about that? Dare I? This is still gonna be plenty strong. I've got my frame around here. I'm not messing with that. Let's try it on mine. So if it's a terrible mess, that's okay. I don't care. I got a stack of paper. Yep, you know what? I'm, I'm cut crazy. I wanna do another thing here. Don't worry, I'm gonna leave this alone. But if I fold, maybe I'll fold right here and do a little snip snip. So I think you're getting the hang of it, right? You could probably manage two pieces of paper at once, but for the first couple of sheets, maybe just do one at a time. And you know, what's the worst thing that could happen is that you'll do one and it doesn't work out or it snips in half or whatever. That's fine, just keep chopping. Katie and I are gonna be chit chatting and you could be chop chopping. I like it. Do you wanna see how I tape it? Just because if you're like me, you're gonna to wanna to be seeing results right away. Taping together your curtain is pretty common sense. Pretty much common sense. You can overlap them slightly, but then the whole thing starts getting like different as soon as you have like six pieces. So I'm actually gonna just try to put them as carefully edge to edge as I can. I'm using the foggy scotch tape, which I usually can't stand, but it's perfect for white paper. Just little bits here and there. You don't need to use up your whole roll. Awesome, it's happening. Figure out what window you wanna do, because you wanna, don't wanna make it too wide for no good reason. So maybe if it's a narrow, maybe you're making a shower curtain, in which case you better get yourself a ton of paper. If Katie Bitely is ready, Katie Bitely can give me a thumbs up. And those of you who are out there, um, do me a favor and think about one question that you would like to ask this week's guest artist. Um, it could be about Bridge because she was in Bridge last year, our after school art club here at Waterfall Arts. It could be about um, her artwork. She, like you, uh, has been getting into working digitally. And so maybe you have some questions about that. All right. So without further ado, let me pull up your name here, Katie. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? Nice, pretty good. Thanks for coming on the show. Is this the first time, have you ever watched Art Time Live? Do you know how this goes? Um, I've watched a little bit of it. Yeah. But I don't think I've watched it. Okay. Well, um, I have a couple pieces of your artwork that I can show, but first I was just wondering if you could tell everybody a little bit about yourself, like how old you are, what grade, where you live, and all that good stuff. Yeah, um, so I live in Belfast, and I'm 12 years old, and I'm in seventh grade. And you were also in Bridge, the after-school club at Waterfall Arts. Um, do you have art class now, currently at Troy Howard Middle School, or what? Uh, no, I had it, so like our school year was 
broken up into four quarters, so I had it in the first quarter, but mm -hmm. I don't have it right now. Okay. And Ms. Mayhew is your teacher? Yes. And she was last week's special guest, so you are in good company. An honored group of people. It was really fun. She showed us um, her, do you know that she's a collage artist? And she was painting and everything else, but she's really been working on these, um, these animal collages. They're awesome. And so if you're out there watching and you haven't seen that, you can go back to YouTube or Facebook and watch last week's. It was really fun. And her daughter Maggie was on there too. And we did some collage. It was super fun. Um, let's see. Katie, I'm going to show the first picture that I'm going to show is, um, um, let me see. How about this one? Tell us a little bit about what we're looking at here. I can move this way. Hey, girl. <laughs> so um, I was just during, during quarantine, but like kind of recently because my school had to quarantine for two weeks. I was just doing a lot of artwork. So I decided I want to try some um, watercolor because I hadn't done that in a while. So I was just looking up on Pinterest, like cool watercolor abstract stuff. And then yeah. abstract faces came up. So I deep dived into that. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to paint a face. <laughs> and then I was like, I want to do kind of like, not abstract necessarily, but like not natural human colors. Mm -hmm. And then I was just because I, I was trying to make uh, art for my room decor. Yeah. Because I want more room decor without spending a bunch of money. Yeah. So it's like, what's something that I would like in my room? So I ended up with this and I did sketch it out a little bit before. Yeah. But yeah, I kind of just rolled with it. And then I used some colored pencils to outline the nose and like specific features. So it was more distinct. Mm -hmm. About how big is this? Is this in a notebook or? It's uh, like a thin kind of canvas thing. So it's like, it's probably like mm -hmm. that big. Okay. Were you working from looking at a picture of somebody in particular, or you were just freestyling a, a face in that profile? I looked at a face kind of face that I found on Pinterest, but it wasn't mm -hmm. anywhere specific. So mm -hmm. then after that, I just kind of went with it. Mm -hmm. I think you used um, those cool colors make it pretty moody. You know, we usually think of like warm colors for facial skin and stuff and so to add that purple and blue makes it kind of more dramatic nice move i find it really tricky to do um that kind of drawing on watercolor like that was very daring when i saw I, I follow katie on instagram and when i saw this come up i was like whoa i've been thinking about trying to do portraits with watercolor and there's even a course that keeps coming up in my feed about it but I was just nervous. So when I saw this, I was like, I gotta try it because it's really fun the way that the colors work and like a, like you said, sort of an abstract way, but also you're definitely doing a portrait of some sort. Pretty cool. I like the um, different, it looks like different colored eyes in there too. Yeah. And could you say a little bit about this? Yeah, so um, this is a drawing of Olivia Rodrigo who wrote their really popular song, Driver's License. And um, I drew this for her birthday just because I just really like her music and stuff. Um, so I was using a digital drawing app called Ibis Paint X and, um, and I was drawing on my Samsung tablet that I got for Christmas. And I was just looking at a, re a reference photo from her Instagram and then I was outlining the basic like figure of it. And then I was pulling colors from that photo because you can do like the eye drop photo thing on there. Okay. So I was pulling colors from that photo onto there and I was kind of like matching up the colors like, like, like with the different shadows and stuff because I used to, when I was doing digital drawings, I used to just do one base color, uh -huh. do a different part of it and then shadow it after. Yeah. So I started shadowing it with the actual color yeah 
This it looks very sophisticated. I mean, when I look at this, it just seems like a professional piece of digital artwork. So, how long have you been working with what was it called, Ibis? Yeah, I've been doing stuff on there for a while, but I think it was in maybe during the summer when I started actually doing a lot of drawing on there because mm -hmm. I used to do it just like randomly. But yeah, I started drawing people a lot. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I have some young friends out there that are just starting to get involved in um, digital artwork. And then I have a larger group of young friends who are like, yeah, I want to get into that. That looks pretty cool. I'm going to start doing that. But they do not spend a lot of time practicing drawing on paper or painting on paper or sculpting with their hands. And I find myself having to say like, getting yourself onto a computer and getting a stylus, you know, and a tablet and everything, you gotta be able to draw to be able to draw. You know, you can, you can trace a lot to get a beginning image, right? But that's only gonna be satisfying for so long is, you know, yeah. tracing and coloring if, if you really wanna be expressive, right? So I just wanted to assure everybody that not only could you tell it in that um, semi-abstract portrait, but Katie, can you talk a little bit about, I might surprise you here that I have this with me. Where is it? I hope I didn't dump my water on it. Look what I have. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I still have this. Yes, I have this. Um, let me get it straight, please. There we go. Um, can you say a little bit about this piece? Yeah, so this is a drawing of Brianna Taylor and me and a couple of my other friends. Uh, painted portraits of people who had lost their lives in police brutality, specifically black people and people of color. Um, so I chose Brianna Taylor and I was just kind of, I was also going off a reference of a photo for this and I was painting like the colors that I saw in the photo that I could match as best as I could with paint. Um, and it took me a while. I it took me and I think, Bridget, you sketched it out from like a projector thing or something. Yeah. And I was painting it in and like adding little details and stuff like that. Yeah. So cool. And it's such a beautiful painting. Um, and I'm glad that you mentioned that it took a while. Like that's another thing that some young artists um, get frustrated with because they're used to in art class in elementary school, like you get the stuff and you do the project and it's done, right? But I mean, how many weeks did we get together and work on these paintings? Like, yeah, I think we started like at the beginning of summer, at least discussing yeah. it, and then yeah, we finished in September or October. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was a lot of work. It was worth it, but it was definitely a lot of work. Um, and also, I just want to mention that. Katie just kind of came up with this idea. And when these paintings were just about done, it just so happened that up at um, Mount Desert Island, there was a call for art for a Black Lives Matter themed art show. And so you guys finished your paintings just in time for us to get them up there to be in this show outside. It was just, it was so awesome and perfect. And um, I'm just so glad because like a hundred people got to see your work and that's really impressive. But Katie, I will give it back to you now. <laughs> I've held on to it for a long time. I will definitely get it back to you. That's awesome. Um, do you think you're gonna do any paper cutting with us today? I know that before you came on, you were just hanging out to see how things were gonna go, but um, I'd like to see what you would make with some scissors. You know what you could do? Cause I know it's a little bit weird watching through this. You could get off of StreamYard and just go watch us on Facebook or something and um, comment. So anything else you want to tell the young artists of today and the Bridge Kids and the Bridge Junior Kids? Because we have, we have one former uh, Bridge student out there that I know of that has given a shout out. I've got at least two Bridge Junior Kids who are, so they're still in elementary school. Any advice? Well, I would say just, 
um, go with the flow with what you, you're drawing. And even if you have like an art block, what I really like to do is like go on Pinterest and just look up other artist ideas and kind of see what they did and how they um, got inspired and stuff. And then yeah, just make your own art and don't exactly copy someone, but just like make, like twist their original art piece up into your mm -hmm. own creative thing. And also don't rush and like know it takes time for some yeah. art pieces to make it really look good. Yeah, that's really great advice. Thank you. Um, if somebody wanted to follow your artwork on Instagram, can you tell me your handle and I can get it up on the screen? Yeah, I'm going to look up my exact because I'm not y'all have several so many of you guys have like several instagram yeah. <laughs> accounts i don't want to put up the wrong one so tell me which one you would prefer and i hope that my friends this whole time have been cutting their paper like crazy i'm going to get my paper back in reach while we get that I know it has your name in it. Yeah, I just put it in the private chat. Okay, great. Oh yeah, I'm glad I didn't try to guess that because it's got all kinds of little punctuations up in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let me just toss that in there. There you go. Peeps, if you want to uh, follow Katie on Instagram, you can look her up. I'll leave that up on the screen for a little bit. Katie, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, if you would, maybe just shoot me a picture of any paper cutting that you end up doing um, by a DM on um, Instagram because I'm going to post them tomorrow, right? Okay. Thank you so much. And thanks for that great advice too. Wasn't that excellent? I love that. I love that I happen to have this in my car because I've been meaning to bring it to the middle school. But sometimes things just like to live in my car for a little while. All right, people, how are you doing on the uh, paper cutting? Were your hands busy that whole dang time? Did you remember not to cut along the edge? And let me tell you, if you do a little boop, 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 boop here and there, it's not a problem. But you don't want to cut a big chunk out here. Because then when you want to tape up your papers, they're not gonna have many hands to hold. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually gonna do two pieces at a time again. And as you get better at paper cutting and more patient, you can start doing more and more detailed work and the payoff will be more and more uh, detailed shadows and light cast on the walls and the floor. It's just really so beautiful. All right. Now, how about this fold? If I fold this thing in half this way, right on the diagonal, let's see how that goes. Actually, I'm going to do it this way so I can see my warning signs here. Oh, this is going to be very thick. Yep, wishing I had, I had doubled my paper up there. Boop, boop. I'm going to do more of an organic shape now. Mm-hmm, interesting. I'm gonna keep the organic theme going. This one's gonna be like a lava lamp. You could do this with colored paper. I always like to use, you know, scrap paper that you might have from home. However, if this has any, if this were like a worksheet from home and you put it up in the window, you're gonna have like, dear parents is gonna be showing through when you put it up in the window, so. Paper that hasn't been used for something else yet is always a good idea. The paper cuts in the window. 
Boy, the comments are quiet today, man. Really busy. Mavis is doing well. That's good. I don't mind messing up in paper cutting um, as much as I do when I'm drawing. There's just something less terrible about it. <laughs> it's just, you know, one cut too many and my paper falls apart. Well, it's not a big deal. It's just a smaller piece where I tape it back together, you know. Here's a big area of boring, but I don't want to mess with this, right? So I'm going to cut some kind of blob here. How do I do it? Fold your paper. What, I can fold it in this random spot? Of course you can, of course. Don't worry about it, just do it, all right. Man, if we all combined all of our rectangles, we could make a curtain big enough for the art studio. That'd be so cool. What do I have? The big reveal. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I want a little something in the middle. I want some sun to come shining through there. So, Maybe some of you have been doing this the whole time because you are used to cutting snowflakes and you always like to put a little bit of a star there. So I'm just folding it back up. Tiny snip, you never wanna go overboard in the middle. Tiny is better. Let's see. Yippee! There we go. I like it. Oops. Forgot to do this one though. I'm gonna fold it back up. As usual, please send me pictures. I know you're gonna have to work on this one a little bit longer. So whenever you're done, even if it's tomorrow, send me pictures. Um, you can email me, Bridget at waterfallarts.org, or you can um, send it to me on Instagram if someone in your family is on Instagram, or on Facebook at Waterfall Bridge. You can send it there. And then I like to take everything that people send me and I put it up in one post on uh, Instagram and on Facebook. So that would be cool. I really wanna see it in the window, by the way. I don't need to see your fingers poking through it. You know, cool. I want the whole vision. <gasps> I love it. All right, before we go, I'm gonna tape what I have together. Give me another sign of life out there on my comments so I know that you're Hanging in there. Davis is hanging in there. Oh my gosh, I spilled water <laughs> all over the place. Okay. Next week's Art Time Live, we will be drawing tessellations. There's so many ways of drawing something that would be called a tessellation. It's just a repeated pattern. But we're gonna do one that is somewhat simple to do We'll do it together, but it looks really cool. Curtain is coming together. There we go. I'm just gonna tape these and then I'm gonna let you go. Um, another touch for these, if you wanted a colored curtain is after this is done, you could just do a, a wash, a quick light wash with watercolors over it but you'd want to commit to doing the whole thing. So if you don't have it in you, don't start, because then it's just gonna look like you spilled something on a little bit of your <laughs> curtain. So decide if you really wanna do that. Um, or you could do, you could trace around the cuts, the shapes with a marker, and that'll add a little bit of color. But again, like, just decide if you wanna do it or not, because the key is consistency. All right, let's see what I got. Oops. Yeah. How cool is that? I love it. All right, people. Thank you as usual for joining me. I had some wicked technical difficulties in the beginning, so uh, I hope you're able to stick with me. But again, next week, Tune in for Tessellations at four o'clock on Tuesday or any old time that you feel like watching the video. 
just make sure that you leave a comment so that I know that you're out there having a good time and making stuff with me. Let's just for fun, in case you missed our uh, opening video, I'm gonna play that on our way out. See everybody, thanks for coming.